I am going to attempt to escape Harry Houdini's deadliest trick, the water torture cell. You're gonna do this? Yeah. What? Yeah, whatever you come up with. <laughs> <laughs> Known as one of the deadliest stunts in magic, I will be submerged upside down, handcuffed, and have only a single breath to make my escape. I don't know anyone who has done this that's not a magician. This is what you always do. <laughs> Over the next six weeks, I will be training with magicians to learn how to pick locks. There you go. And world-class freedivers to learn how to hold my breath for minutes at a time. For those of you watching on YouTube, do not try this at home. Any longer than two minutes on that clock could spell disaster. Okay. It's so in my head. I was just thinking about the whole time, like, how am I supposed to do this with handcuffs on? Like, yeah. Oh God, how long was I under? For like 45 seconds. Oh so if you think about stuff like that, you will get in your head and freak yourself out. Okay. And whenever you're training, I want you to have that mindset. Like, no, I control this. It's on my terms. That's how you're gonna nail your stunt. Okay. We're ready. All right. Over a hundred years ago, legendary magician and escape artist Harry Houdini invented what has become known as one of the greatest magic stunts ever devised by man. Houdini would be suspended upside down with his feet locked in stocks and lowered into a tank filled to the brim with water. The challenge was for him to escape from the locked water-filled cell before running out of breath. And Houdini captivated audiences with this stunt until his death on Halloween night, 1926. In order to replicate the success of Houdini's trick, over the next six weeks, I'll have to train to hold my breath for multiple minutes at a time. What we're gonna do is we're gonna work our way up to a peak inhale using what we call the segmented breathing exercise. You're gonna fill your belly as full as you can make it, then fill the chest. If I lift oh. my shoulders, I increase the volume of my lungs. I learned there's actually a technique to help extend your breath hold to superhuman lengths, used by endurance artists like David Blaine, but more commonly by freedivers, including Guinness World Record holder Lance Davis. We're gonna do some purge breathing on this one. And this is a faster exhale. And purge, two, three, four. Inhale, and purge, two, three, four. Diaphragm, chest, shoulders. Purge breathing refers to a technique used to prepare the body for a breath hold by expelling your body's CO2. When done correctly, you can increase oxygen intake, thus improving your breath hold. However, if done in the water unsupervised, purge breathing can lead to loss of consciousness, and in some cases, shallow water death, making this some of the most dangerous training I've ever attempted. If our oxygen levels get low enough, we become hypoxic. The individual would start to have little mild seizures. Loss of consciousness is a pretty big safety concern. Because that's how people actually drown. I'm gonna be safeting you and that's all I do. Good, and breathe. Oh, dang breathe, it. breathe, breathe, breathe. There were moments where, did you feel you were kind of like this? Yeah. Those might have been contractions. While you may not love that feeling, as the Marines say, you want to embrace the suck. Yeah. And so what we mean is like- So that's that, healthy. Yes. That's okay. Yes. I'm not feeling super confident right now, if I'm fully honest. It's really daunting to imagine how much I have to learn and grow in just the next couple weeks. <laughs> But breath work is only one piece of the puzzle. For my final performance, I will need to be confident in picking real locks and handcuffs. To learn this, I was lucky enough to be invited to the world famous Magic Castle, an exclusive club run by the Academy of Magical Arts in Hollywood, where only members and guests are allowed inside. Today, I'm meeting with Gabriela Lester, who is one of the Magic Castle's up and coming escapologists. I started doing stage shows when I was 12 and then became one of the youngest to ever do the upside down straight jacket escape when I was 14. Last year, when I was 18, I went on TV for the first time to do Penn and Teller's Fool Us. Gabriela Lester! 
These are the same things. These are both real handcuffs. They're what you call double locking handcuffs. What does that's that mean? Because there's two different ways to lock them. So first would be when you just close it, it locks and that prevents this from moving at all, keeps it on your wrist. And the second is an extra lock that just goes on the back, which is what the back of the key is for. It pushes that bar in, allowing the double lock to press down the spring, which means these teeth can't move anymore. It's like two staircases going wow, in a different direction. Okay. So when the teeth go in, what prevents them from going back out is the fact that there's another set of these going the opposite direction. So in order to pick them, you need a flat piece of metal, which we call a shim. We're gonna be using a bobby pin to put a little flat piece in between. This bobby pin can slide in like that, and that's what allows you to slide this in and out and get it off your wrist. Whoa! Should I try it on my wrist now? Yeah, you should. Okay. Awesome. No idea how I'm gonna do this upside down underwater, but one step at baby a time. Baby steps, baby steps. You're going for two wrists, okay, awesome. Well, you what just, else are we supposed you know what? to do? Go for it. This is Go it, for right? it, you're in it, okay. So you're gonna take that flat side, put it in there. Like this? I'll do it on my wrist at the same time. So <laughs> palm up on the scent and put it against your body like that. And then what you're gonna do is put the bobby pin in there and you're gonna push these down at the same time. Yeah. Push those down, you've got it. Just feel it and then bring it up with your other finger. That's it, you got one. So you've got a little more movement now because his hand is out, so whatever you need to just feel comfortable. Houdini, when he started, worked in the locksmith shop, and that was like his core roots of where he grew as a performer. No cuffs could hold him, no locks could hold him, no prison cell, no person. So I think it's important for Michelle to start in the beginning, the really, really simple things, even though there are many complexities in the worlds of lock fixing, and then eventually make it up to the tank. Yay! Yeah, that's it, okay. I didn't know any of this history of Houdini when we set out to do this project. Well, let me tell you, Houdini had so many lives before he was a magician. He was an amateur boxer. He lived on the road with a traveling circus. And some people theorize that he was actually helping the Secret Service identify counterfeit coins. Sound familiar? Houdini was able to take all of these seemingly random skill sets, bundle them all together, and create something that was bigger than himself. There you go. All right, so do you want a job? <laughs> but to make my big escape, I won't just need to know handcuffs. I'll also need to learn the nuances of different models and brands of padlocks. And on top of that, I'll have to be able to do it underwater. So already this feels totally different from any other time I've done handcuffs because my body is buoyant. The thing I'm struggling with the most is avoiding panic. <laughs> so as a freediver, I never think about the fact that I'm holding my breath, and I never think about time, and I'm just in the moment. When I'm stressed, I like to breathe. And in this, I have to uh, remain calm underwater while I know the clock is ticking. First moment something goes wrong, I start freaking out. That's not gonna be good for me, for the real thing. But training in a fish tank in my backyard can only get me so far. <laughs> and I realized I needed to start training in a full-size tank as soon as possible. The only problem is that you can't just walk into a store and buy a water torture cell. Because to our knowledge, there are only a few of these tanks in existence. 285, gonna make it now. $300,000 I have. Bang, it sold at 300000 and so I need to assemble a team to build my very own water torture cell, which brings us to Crunch Labs. You're gonna do this? Yeah. What? Like, or a version of this? Yeah, whatever you come up with. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so make it doable, please. <laughs> oh, man. 
In case you live under a rock, Mark Rober is the internet's greatest engineer, responsible for some of the most viral inventions of our time, making him the perfect person to help design our stunt. And to do this, he invited us to his larger-than-life engineering lab, where all the real magic happens. Thank you, everyone, for being here at what I am calling the Magician's Brain Trust. I think you're a magician in your own right, Mark, <laughs> at this point. Yeah, and what I'm so excited about this. This is not scripted at all. Like, this is really gonna be a thing. Like, we're coming in cold. I'm so excited. The objective of today's meeting is to solve a problem. Harry Houdini created the water torture cell. I want to do something similar to that, but like a good magician, be additive and transformative to it and really make it my own. The original trick by Harry Houdini was actually performed behind a curtain. So really? he was lifted into the air, lowered into the tank. A curtain would come up. A few minutes later, he'd be standing on top. When Houdini performed it, no one really saw him inside of the tank when he did the performance. So when we brought it into newer times, people have started doing it in full view. So I would like to go no curtain with whatever yeah. we do. Yeah, and I'd say visibility is the way to go. I guess yeah. it's 100 years in the future, you can't cover what you're doing with the curtain. Yeah. But we wanted to brainstorm to see if we could push the stunt just a bit further. Piranhas. Perhaps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Electric eels. Oh, yeah. Sharks. These are amazing ideas. Getting what if we were changed. spinning the whole thing as well? But also give people like a 360 view that there's no funny yeah. business behind. If it's in the air, it's never been done where it's been visible from all angles. Like you've had around the tank, but if you have it suspended and it's glass top and bottom. We have a tank within a tank. <laughs> you go in the tank and then they start filling the outer tank with cement. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what if you had flame bars? That were coming down at the same time. Oh my god. What if we do uh, electrocution? You put a toasters <laughs> and hair dryers yeah, yeah, that yeah. will drop down. What? Oh, yeah, time, they're right? Right? They're slowly coming down <laughs> <laughs> as the time goes down, right? But like all good engineers, Mark started getting a bit carried away. Two tanks like this with hungry piranhas with like a trap door. This trap door would come up and they would come in. Of course, you got the toaster coming down this way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will will say you're not allowed to transport piranhas across state lines. Don't ask me how I know that. Are you filming this in California? Yeah. The worst. But the crazier that our ideas became, the more the whole thing started feeling like a gimmick. And we realized that the heart of the illusion was in front of us all along. Is there a way to sell the real risk, like that you would be in trouble if you didn't get out yourself? Realistically, it's just drowning. Lady Houdini, Kristen, she has done it over 600 times. And she was doing a halftime performance where she had like a mini seizure during her performance. Whoa. They had to like help get her out and she almost died doing that. So even if you've done it hundreds and hundreds of times, you're swirling around, you're underwater for more than a minute, it gets to you. Even if someone's there to like come and save you, like it's still gonna take them time. Like there's yeah, a yeah. real risk here. It's not like super safe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And after two long hours, here is what we finally decided. Number one, taking away the curtain so the stunt is done in full view with no visual trickery. Number two, adding handcuffs to restrain my wrists. Number three, adding a padlock steel chain to bind my arms. Number four, designing the lid to be a foot stockade to restrain my feet. And number five, locking the tank with one final padlock from the outside. Houdini was a genius inventor, and many people forget that now in time because you kind of lose it in history. And that's why his success was so prominent at the time. The genius of this design is that when I pick the lock by my ankles, I can free and open the leg shackles. Now I can reach my hands through the two holes on the top to find the final lock. Isn't that cool? Does this have the Mark Rober seal of approval? The Mark Rober banger seal of approval. Ah! Okay. 100%. Okay, cool. I think we're done here. <laughs> <laughs> what is your budget for this, by the way? Um, we're gonna find out. Okay. <laughs> Well, we did find out, and the cost to build this thing is very expensive. And so I want to thank the sponsor of this video, SoFi, the all-in-one personal finance app, who's also helping me give away $10,000 to one of you watching this video. Okay, so these are the four obstacles I'm gonna have to overcome in the tank. We have a pair of handcuffs, a padlock and chains, a padlock on the interior of the lid, and the lock at my feet on the exterior of the lid. My active breath hold right now is at about 90 seconds, which isn't the best. So ideally, I need to move through all of the locks in less than 60 seconds. And right now I'm gonna try all of them back to back to back for the first time. Let's do it. <laughs> we going? Go. Oh, okay. By the way, we have been working on some insane episodes of Challenge Accepted that are coming out later this year. 
So it's really important for us to stay on top of our finances. SoFi checking and savings allows you to earn up to 4.60% APY in just five weeks with direct deposit. The money sitting in your savings account can earn more money than it would have in an entire year. Woo! At a big bank savings account. <laughs> with SoFi checking and savings, you can get paid up to two days early, pay no account fees, and earn up to $300 when you sign up with direct deposit. This one is so annoying. Mm, got it. But the coolest part about SoFi is that they're actually helping me give away $10,000 to one of you guys watching to pursue whatever your ambition is. And I really hope that it's not this. But to enter, all you gotta do is go to the link in the description, or you can scan the QR code that's on the screen right now to enter for your chance to win the 10,000. This one is the one underneath the lid. By the way, you just gotta make sure to use my link because it's the only way to enter for a chance to win the $10,000. Ah, okay, there we go. Thank you so much to SoFi for sponsoring this portion of the video and literally making this whole operation possible. How long was that? Two and a half minutes. Oh my God. <laughs> I either need to improve my breath hold significantly or get way faster at picking locks. And hopefully soon, because in two days from now, I'm going to see the built tank for the first time. After so many weeks of meeting after meeting after meeting, we finally get to see a version of the fabricated tank and an opportunity for me to get inside and feel what it's like to be in there. Hi, I'm Michelle, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. Magic is a team sport, I'm realizing. The biggest element of all of this, however, is safety. And so we brought in Steve Brown, who is on the Avatar stunt team. We've done a ton of water work from under the water to on fire above, to things in the sky, fighting, falling. Say on Avatar, when you're performing underwater, it is very scary. This is a very, very specialized trick that only a select few in the industry, let alone the world, can do. And the fact that Michelle has taken it on, I'm a little nervous. I don't know anyone who has done this that's not a magician. <laughs> but this is you. This is what you always do. Yeah. Oh my god. There it is. What's up? So this is your creation. <laughs> Holy smokes. It's kind of heavy. Take the lock out. So this is a very great day for testing. Yeah. It's time to go up. So my role today in this test is to make sure that anything that could possibly go wrong, we've identified that potential issue before it could actually happen. Because at the end of the day, we want to make sure that Michelle is safe and able to live and breathe another day. Hi. Hi. <laughs> She's in. If you feel discomfort, you just tell me and I'll tell them to stop and slowly bring it back down, okay? Going up. There is nothing comfortable and calm about being hung upside down. You have all that blood and pressure rushing to your head. So there's a whole series of things that is adding to the stress. Are you okay? Yeah. And hold that. Can I just hang here for a bit? Yeah. And if you feel comfortable once you've had a few moments, obviously sitting up is very difficult from this position, but knowing what it's gonna be like in your reach. And the reason I'll need to be capable of an inverted sit up is because there will be a padlock on the inside of the lid that I'll have to pick in order to free my feet. Good. Yeah, I mean, I obviously feel pressure on the back of my Achilles and then the top of my foot. Yeah, we'll, we'll get her down and then put your hands down and then slowly bring your body forward, okay? The wooden part, I just don't want to get a splinter or cut myself when I'm pulling my Yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna finish. We should keep it as is, because yeah. even with that little bit of discomfort, your full body weight's taken by your ankles, which it normally doesn't do. So, so just to clarify, the no. first thing, I'll just get in there, feel it, and then we're gonna test pushing the door open. Yes. It's really important for me to familiarize myself with the tank and work out any kinks now, because this is one of the only times I get to train with the tank before my final performance. Two, three, four. But I was getting increasingly frustrated because my breath hold times were actually starting to get worse. On one hand, I'm focusing on static breath holds, and the other, I'm working on active breath holds. A static breath hold is where you hold your breath and completely power your body down. One minute, it should be stressful. <laughs> 28. Minute 15. One minute. 
we're gonna just acknowledge that this isn't the best day, that's okay. Sometimes the worst days teach us the most of what we need to improve. Confronting this enemy of the clock is really difficult for me to do. I'm a very goal-oriented person. I want to hit certain times. And being told, stop thinking about the clock and just let yourself float away, sounds nice in a yoga class, and it's absolutely f***ing awful when you can't breathe. <laughs> oh. I can see it in your body language that you're letting it just rapidly overwhelm you. Why? Trying is fighting, and fighting is not what we want to do in these moments. I don't know how to, like, Relax. I feel like I have to muscle through to relax. It can't take the athlete approach. You can't just knuckle down. Yeah. You have to submit to it. I think it would be hard for Michelle to get out of her own head in the same way for me before you do something like this. Zero seven. <sighs> Houdini's biggest thing was saying my brain is the key that sets me free. And as soon as Michelle can work that kind of monologue into her head, I think she'll be great for this. Show 338, 338. Yes! Harry Eugenie's breath hold personal record was three minutes and 30 seconds. As of today, mine is 338. However, that is a static hold. That might mean nothing when it comes to my final challenge because I'll need to maximize my active breath hold. Yeah, wash your head, all right? An active hold is where you hold your breath while doing an activity using energy. So naturally, the active breath hold is going to be less time than the static hold. <laughs> We're at about minute 30. So in order to improve my active breath hold, Lance started adding hypoxic cardio into my training plan, which is basically doing exercise intervals without breathing. This is a CO2 tolerance training. It's pretty intense, so <laughs> good, much better. So I am going to be practicing holding my breath as long as I can while also navigating all of this. <laughs> One fifty-nine. My active hold is averaging about two minutes now, but the question is, can I pick four locks upside down in the tank in two minutes? our rehearsal day, the day before our final performance, and everybody is here. We get to see if all of the training comes through with all of the elements in place, the props, the tank, being upside down. This is the real deal. If you're cool with it right now, I'd love to just put you on the lid, hang you, suspend you, travel you over, then that way you can kind of just feel being over top and just do the breath holds upside down. What are we doing? <laughs> you, you tell me. You're the one that called me. I know. Feet are all secured? <laughs> all right, you ready, Michelle? Yes. All right, on you guys. Start transition to perch breaths. Three, two, one, hold. my entire body weight is being held by just my ankles and they're being held by an iron stockade. So that is not comfortable at all. We might want to consider putting little pieces of uh, foam around you too, take more pressure off your ankles once you're in there. Things are going wrong and we have 24 hours to resolve them. Start transitioning to purge breaths. Three, two, one. Hold. Michelle, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? If I tell you it's 30 seconds, can you hear me clearly? I'm using the walkie. Can you hear me on the walkie? 
Sorry, I just opened my eyes and like the lights were disorienting to me. These are all like minor things that when you're watching, you don't realize as an audience member, but these very small things have such astronomical impact. So when I'm lowered into the tank, my breath hold begins technically, even though the stunt hasn't begun in full. Hold. Just getting into the tank is already probably a 20 second breath hold. And then I only have a minute 40 to escape all the other locks, which means I have 25 seconds per lock. That's really fast lock picking. It doesn't give any room for error. Lock is on, you're ready to go. Go, go, go. One minute. unable to escape the tank. I'm tapping out at 1.30, and I feel an immense sense of imposter syndrome, but I'm not Houdini, and who do I think I am trying this? I have put so much time and energy into training for these past six weeks. I'm not even hitting the benchmarks I could in the pool to make all of the time, energy, and teamwork worth it. I get one shot tomorrow. Okay, so it's like a magic show. Magic show. Look okay. at this and tell me it's not a magic yeah, show. Come yeah, on. Okay, all right, cool. <laughs> you can have like an MC. Yeah. Oh my what gosh. a pleasure. <laughs> so good to be like here in the suit, no less. Yes. Oh my god. This is so legit. <laughs> you could not pay me any <laughs> amount of money <laughs> to do what you're about to do. I read like this whole book in a day, and then I took all these copious notes on everything. But one of my favorite quotes from the book is, Houdini's willingness to try anything was a function of his insatiable thirst for knowledge of every aspect of show business, and his shrewd ability to take unrelated skills and use them to his own advantage. Challenge accepted. Welcome. One and all to this most anticipated and freaky as heck event, Challenge Accepted presents Houdini's Deadliest Trick. My name is Sam Reich. I am so happy to merely be your host this evening. Before we get started, I am obligated to say the following. Hopefully this all goes well, but in case it doesn't, Please stay calm and remain in your seats. Our rescue team and medical professionals are standing by, waiting to intervene if necessary. Stay warm, you warmed up? Like physically yeah, warm, warm? Yeah, I'm way warmer. Okay, cool. And just remind yourself that once, once you lay on that table, this world is your world, right? Everything slows down to your pace and each intake and exhale it's just you just releasing everything, okay? We'll see you out there. Behind me, Houdini's most infamous creation, the water torture set, a vertical waterlogged coffin. Tonight, Michelle Carré has accepted the challenge of escaping from this herself. I, for one, am nervous for her. New friends, I would hate for our relationship to end as quickly as it began. These keys are coming with me. 
Now, let's hold for a moment and watch as Michelle prepares. In rehearsals, Michelle's breath hold time maxed out at two minutes. Any longer than two minutes on that clock could spell disaster. Prepare yourself for an unparalleled act of bravery and discipline. For those of you watching on YouTube, we must emphasize, do not try this at home. Being upside down disorients the senses. Blood rushes to the head. Michelle's goal right now is to remain as calm and focused as possible and to slow her heart rate. Any unnecessary movement will only lessen her breath hold time. Okay. Here we go. In five, four, three, two, one, hold. Michelle is in the water, and our timer has begun. Her first order of business, once she gets the go-ahead, is to extract that bobby pin from her wardrobe. You are locked. Go, go, go. She's made quick work of that, is now unbending it, such as to pick the locks on her cuffs. One is out already! The second one appears to be giving her a bit more trouble. has made quick work of the second one. This chest padlock has given her the most trouble in rehearsals, and it appears to be giving her some trouble now. Escaping. And she's done it. Unbelievable. And now, needs to get these chains off the top of her head. One minute and 30 seconds have elapsed. This chain is giving her some real trouble. And it's off! Michelle only has two locks left. The ones at her feet and the ones securing the tank closed. But we are dangerously close to two minutes. This is beyond what Michelle has done in rehearsal. Those legs are off, meaning all that's left is for her to secure the top of the lid. Our safety team is standing by if necessary. taught me anything in the last six weeks, it's how to find the power in packaging the skills that make you, you. That anyone, no matter how obscure or random your talents may seem, can find success. Challenge Accepted has often left me feeling like a jack of all trades and a master of none. But now I'm starting to see how that can be oftentimes better than a master of one. If you want to see more videos of me getting my ass kicked, Please consider subscribing so you don't miss some of the insane episodes we've got coming next.